The 6.5 is on the road here in St. Louis for Supercomputing 2025 show. Daniel, it's been a great show so far, and imagine that, a lot of talk about AI, but also staying true to a lot of compute, a lot of networking, and a lot of data. Yeah, it's buzzing here, Pat. I mean, supercomputing has exploded over the last few years. We've seen it grow exponentially with AI. I mean, a city like St. Louis can barely handle this event anymore. They're probably gonna have to move this thing to Las Vegas pretty soon <laughs> because literally everyone on the planet is eyes on what's going on here with high performance yeah. computing because it is really the original yeah. AI. Yeah, and there's there are challenges with scaling AI. I mean, that that there's there's nothing new at that. And one company that's right front and center uh, at helping their customers deal with that complexity is Lenovo. And we have brought back Vlad. Yeah. Great to see Thanks, Pat. you. Thanks, To help. We're really interested yeah. how you're helping your customers here. Yeah, Pat, Dan, so good to see you guys. And thanks for being here at Super Computing with Lenovo. You know, this is an amazing show. We've been doing this show for over a dozen years. Uh, in fact, I've personally been doing this show for probably close to 15 years. And I remember the first time I came here, it was government national labs, some research sites on the university side. Yeah. And what you've seen, you've seen this amazing transformation of high performance computing to AI, just like you guys said. But what's amazing for us here at the show, and even as big as it is this year here in St. Louis, one of the things we're seeing is that there's a diversity of customers. We're seeing your traditional right. HPC shops doing things like physics codes and fluid dynamics and EDA. But now you're seeing, and on the other side, you're seeing these AI shops and you're thinking, and you see big CSPs and Neo clouds actually using this show because some of the techniques that have come from a supercomputing background. But then you're also seeing AI for scientific research, which is really a combination of the both. Sure. And so it really is why we're here from a Lenovo standpoint is we want to service all three of those aspects of what I consider HPC to AI supercomputing, and there's no better place to do it. You kind of, you know, indicated all the momentum here, and you've been here quite a while, but in terms of the, like from a Lenovo standpoint, what is Lenovo's role in terms of enabling HPC in AI? Yeah, Dan, there's, there's a couple things that we see from a Lenovo standpoint. If I start with that Neo Cloud space, you know, these are amazing corporations, companies like Nscale and Boost Run that Lenovo has worked with. And they're coming into a new market, a new market where they are satisfying yeah. supercomputing like hardware with big capital reserves. And how do they look at some of these application stacks? And a company like Boost Run will actually come to Lenovo and really do a full soup to nuts type of evaluation deployment. They need help with services for deployment on-prem. They look at things like water cooling and how can Lenovo be there to install some of our uh, warm water liquid cooling for our Neptune products. They look to us to give recommendations based off of parameter sizes for maybe some of these large language models on which GPUs should we be looking. Yeah. And what's really important about that Neo Cloud space is this time to first token type of capability. And those types of companies are coming to Lenovo to ensure that when they're ready with their money, whether it's a CapEx or an OpEx type uh, uh, component, that they have this time to first token of, here is where we're gonna execute and here's where our customers are gonna be able to start generating value. So that's one of the things yeah. that we're seeing in the Neo Cloud space, which has been a really big focus for us. On the HPC side, hey, we've been doing Neptune liquid cooled for 10 years, 10 years. And so, so many of the, the customers, the, the institutions that I see here at Supercomputing, they're coming to Lenovo to really try to understand, hey, what are some of the new innovations? Yeah. Because power rack density is going up, CPU power is going up, GPU power is going up, and they want to come to Lenovo to understand, how do I make sure I, I factor in all these yeah. components to get the right building block based on my power, my cooling, uh, and the workloads that they're running. So on the Neo Cloud side, is it as simple to say is it's the frontier models driving the demand? Mm. Uh, or is, is it is there something more on, on the double click? And maybe also comment on you know, traditional HPC as well. What's driving all this demand? Yeah, I think with, let me, let me hit the first one first with traditional HPC. I think what's driving this demand right now that we see is because of AI, and how fast things are moving. Right. There's a renewed focus in HPC to say, hey, 
we need to make sure we are ready to go and how do we perform more complex operations? How do we become more efficient in our data center? And how do we actually produce AI-like results, which is now then set as the standard yeah. through some of these AI-type workloads? Now, that is that see. more of a cost for per flop? Oh, it's always, it is. It's, it's, it's cost per flop per watt. Got it. And that's a real important part of that HPC equation versus the NeoCloud equation where that per watt sometimes is a don't care right. because of the way they're servicing their large language models and frontier models. And is it more about tops in the NeoClouds? It, it, it's, I think it's more about, it, I mentioned it before, time to first token. Yeah. And so it really is, it's that total performance as fast as you can get it based off of the new silicon that's coming out of people like NVIDIA and AMD. So in terms of you know, your particular infrastructure, right? I mean, here we are, show floor is filled with companies that are also in many cases, trying to say they offer something similar. Yep. What is it unique about what Lenovo is doing that's basically driving choice and, and, and making Lenovo the, yep. the pick to help yep. with AI infrastructure? Well, Dan, here, here's one of the things we see, right? The permutations in the AI space and the high performance computing space are growing by the day. You have x86 CPUs from Intel and AMD and you have ARM CPUs. Now you have GPU components from AMD and NVIDIA. Now you start seeing accelerators being compounded on top of that and NPUs and yeah. TPUs. And what's interesting is so many of these customers here who are trying to figure out what do they want to do, they can't evaluate everything. And so what is unique from a Lenovo perspective on what we're doing, we're trying to guide customers based off of their workload, what their parameter sizes may be, on here is what you should be looking at. Now the other thing we give them is, it really is, it's this edge to cloud uh, capacity that Lenovo has had. We've had so many deployments of things like AI at the edge with customers like Kroger doing machine vision for theft detection, running with some of our unique AI innovator ISV partners, all the way to looking at giant eight-way racks that are operating at 150 kilowatts and moving yeah. up. And so the expertise that we give customers, Dan, is it's exactly that. It's the edge AI, the edge HPC, all the way up to these really monster kind of AI factories. I really love the uh, the Kroger example, and I do appreciate, listen, I think we all love the tech. Yep. I want to give these DLC pipes a big hug, you know? I mean, <laughs> like maybe get a picture of it. Yeah, let's We do can it. do that. Yeah, let's do it. But in the end, it's about driving real results, and that's either in the scientific world, the enterprise world, or whatever new world, the physical world at some point. So talk about some of those installations and and some of the uh, the downstream benefits that they're seeing. Yeah, no, Pat, and, and first of all, I'd love to see you both give you know those liquid cooling pipes <laughs> a hug. It may be on Dan's Only Dan's page, but- yeah. um, I'm glad but, that's you know, coming out, thank I, you. Yeah, see that? And you know, he's got the drip on the shoes too. So if you haven't seen these shoes, you know, if you want to see more of that, go to his- I mean, when you don't have the content, you got to go with the style. <laughs> I, I got uh, you. He's got it, he's got it. Pat, what, one of the things I'll tell you is that when I start looking at how are we helping guide yeah. customers today, um, the amount of power capacity that is required for some of these AI data centers or high performance compute data centers, I have had 30 meetings just in the last two days. And some of the content conversation is, hey, how much power do you have coming into the, your data center? How, what is your cooling infrastructure for that data center? Right. And then most importantly, what is your networking and storage uh, uh, requirements for that data center as well. And so this is somewhere where, from a Lenovo perspective, we will help with those customers to say, let's define the workload, let's define the business outcome, yes. let's understand, are you using a colo like Digital Realty, or are you putting it on-prem for latency, sovereignty, uh, or cost reasons in some, some cases, are you putting it on-prem? And if you're putting it on-prem, that's where Lenovo could come in and really do an entire hybrid cloud analysis yes. and an installation service to really help them along the way. I love it. Hyper cloud analysis, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Hugging pipes and hyper clouds <laughs> with, great, with great drip. They so. come together. I love it. You have teenagers? I, I do. Okay, I, the word drip, I yeah. just, it's like, that's such a tell. Like, there's no <laughs> way that was your work, right? Um, I, I'm there, I have them yeah. too. Well, actually, now they're all in their 20s. Anyways. <laughs> Getting old, Vlad. I know, old. I know. So, yeah. so, so with all this going on, another thing is yeah. there's a lot of attention being taken. You started to kind of talk about, uh, you know, cooling and sustainability a little bit. 
regulatory is going to start to creep up. When you've yep. got this many gigawatts, people yep. are concerned about the, the grid, the capacity yep. here yep. in the U.S. and everywhere else. They're concerned about raising electricity rates right. to people around that are near yep. these data centers. Like, how can how can Lenovo help ensure that AI compute continues to scale? We get all the economic yep. benefits but that we do it sustainably yeah. and within regulatory framework. Yeah, and Dan, you're, you're hearing some crazy things in the industry today. You're hearing about micro nuclear uh, deployments because the power grids are getting taxed. You're also seeing a lot of, hey, I don't want that data center in my backyard either, right? That's That's been hitting the headlines across the US and across other countries around the world. Um, you know, we see interesting regulatory things. You know, old Bitcoin miners up in the Nordics that have power, capacity, space, cooling, like, you know, You're like, too. yeah, You're too. yeah. And, and, and those are the ones that are, you know, they're taking advantage of their environmental conditions, right. which is good. It's good that they're actually utilizing that type of environment. What we also see is how do we help a customer measure their PU, PUEs? How do we help a customer look at things like instead of cold water intake on a, on a water cooling solution, like some of our competitors do, what Lenovo does is we actually use warm water. This way you don't have to chill it on the front side, which is actually using more electricity. So if you don't need to use the electricity to chill it, and you can actually run it with a warm water loop, it actually saves on your overall energy efficiency. We're also using things like copper piping across all of our tubes. Some of our competitors will use PVC, which then has a, a factor for potential cracking over time. And the last thing you want is a liquid event in your data center. Um, so this is something where sustainability, efficiency, uh, liquid cooling, either direct uh, uh, open loop to chip or full scale rack, uh, as we're producing in some of our uh, Neptune uh, N1380 chassis. Those are some of the areas that we're helping customers look at sustainability and efficiency across their compute deployments. Yeah, it's a big topic. It's uh, one that we're certainly going to be watching very closely, Pat. I mean, in the end, energy does seem to hold the key. I mean, every day there's a kind of a new, what is the real uh, threshold? Is it chips? Yeah. Is it the ODMs and how fast you can build servers? Is it the amount of energy available? Is it the regulatory environment? Is it security and compliance? So we've got a lot of risk. Yeah. One thing, yeah. uh, you know, just for fun here yeah. at the end, Vlad, you know, Pat and I get asked this all the time. There's a certain company of a close partner of yours that's gonna report, uh, report earnings this day while we're here. Um, and there's a lot of this kind of, oh, AI is a bubble. You're out in, every day in sales. Do you have any, <laughs> Any of the conversations you have in, insinuate to you that this demand and this, this, this enthusiasm isn't real? You know what, I'll tell you, Dan, I've, I meet with a lot of customers, a lot of CIOs, hyperscalers, neo Enterprises. Enterprises. Governments, yeah. And both here at Supercompute and other events where I'm meeting some of these customers, I've asked the question, hey, are we in a bubble? Yeah. And I have had so many people come back to me and say, Vlad, I wake up in the morning thinking this is a bubble. But then I look at the amount of compute that is driving some of these new requirements in the business sense. We have just hit the large language model training part of this AI transition. Yeah. What is next happening is how do we look at enterprise AI? How do we look at HPC AI? That is gonna drive a new increase in opportunity and usage. And some of those customers who I ask, is it a bubble? They say every morning we think it might be a bubble and they go to bed saying, I need to build 3x the capacity of what I planned for. And that has not slowed down. What we're also seeing is customers are signing three, four year commitments to this product, to, to data centers. Yeah. People are building data centers, you're gonna fill it with something. Yep. And so I, I, I don't think this is a bubble because as soon as we get that point of actually utilizing this to inference, yeah. boy, I think you're actually gonna see even another spike before and, plateau. And inference is pervasive, it's always on, it's the data, you know, we were at an event yesterday where they said like 90% of the enterprise data is behind the, is still behind the yeah. firewall. Yeah. And what, I've heard another CEO say something along the line of 99% of enterprise data hasn't touched AI yet. Yeah. And so we're in the earliest innings, you heard it here, Vlad said it, I didn't say it, I say it all the time, <laughs> not a bubble, Pat says maybe a bubble. I'm just kidding. I don't actually know. Well, you have to check out another episode of 6.5. Pat and I debate that pretty regularly, but Vlad, a lot of fun sitting here at Super hey, and chatting to you. Thanks. Always great to see you guys. I love what you do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you everybody for being part of this episode of the 6.5 on the road. We are here at Supercomputing 2025 in St. Louis. This place is jammed wall to wall. Subscribe, be part of all of our content here at the 6.5. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.